Today we have this really cool trigonometric integral suggested by my friend Danny from the Netherlands. It's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x dx divided by alpha minus sine x, where the alpha parameter is greater than 1. So it's a pretty cool generalized structure characterized by the parameter alpha, and the solution development is pretty satisfying as well. And how exactly do we begin? Well, a nice way to start would be to break down the integral from 0 to 2 pi into an integral from 0 to pi plus an integral from pi to 2 pi of x dx divided by alpha minus sine x. And we can work with the second integral here because I'd rather work with limits being 0 and pi. And I can fix that by a substitution that is letting x equal 2 pi minus u which implies that u equals 2 pi minus x, and of course, dx equals negative du. Now, as x approaches pi, we get 2 pi minus pi, which is pi. And as x approaches 2 pi, we get 2 pi minus pi, which is 0. So it's an integral now from pi to 0 of 2 pi minus u negative du divided by alpha minus sine of 2 pi minus u. So if you expand sine of 2 pi minus u, you'll get negative sine u, meaning that we now have the integral. We can get rid of this extra negative sign by switching up the limits. So we have the integral from 0 to pi of 2 pi minus u divided by alpha plus sine u du. Now, using the linearity of the integration operator, we conclude that the target integral i equals the integral from 0 to pi of x dx divided by alpha minus sine x plus 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi of dx, where I'm renaming all the u's back to x. It's a dummy variable, so renaming it doesn't alter the structure. So yeah, we can simply rename it. So we have 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi of dx divided by alpha plus sine x minus an integral from 0 to pi of x dx divided by alpha plus sine x. So we now have three integrals to evaluate. But it's not exactly an overcomplication because their structures are pretty similar, like these two. And for the case of this integral, the structures are related. So we only have to evaluate one of them and decipher the result for the other integrations, which is going to be pretty simple. So the plan is to take this integral, call it i sub 1, and evaluate it we have the integral from 0 to pi of x dx divided by alpha minus sine x. And this can be evaluated quite nicely using a phase shift followed by a Weierstrass substitution. The phase shift is going from the x realm to the pi minus x realm, which gives me the integral from 0 to pi of pi minus x dx divided by alpha minus sine of pi minus x. Now the sine of pi minus x evaluates out to sine x. So we have the integral from 0 to pi. And again, using the linearity of the integration operator, we have pi dx divided by alpha minus sine x minus the integral from 0 to pi of x dx divided by alpha minus sine x, which we immediately recognize as i sub 1. So this equation implies that i sub 1 would be pi by 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of dx divided by alpha minus sine x. Now for the Weierstrass substitution, we're going to let u equal the tangent of x by 2. And this implies a bunch of stuff that I'm not going to work out because you can do that if you want as some homework. This implies that the sine of x is 2u divided by 1 plus u squared, and dx equals 2du divided by 1 plus u squared. And this stuff is 
pretty easy using trigonometry and differentiation. I just want to save some time. So that means I sub 1 is pi by 2 times the integral from where to where. As x approaches 0, we have the tangent of 0, which is 0. And as x approaches pi, we have u approaching the tangent of pi by 2, which is, of course, positive infinity. So that means we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 2 du divided by 1 plus u squared divided by alpha minus the sine term. So we have alpha minus 2u by 1 plus u squared. The 2s cancel out quite nicely, and some simplification is in order. We have pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of du divided by 1 plus u squared divided by 1 plus u squared times alpha minus 2u divided by 1 plus u squared. Again, some nice cancellation. And that means we have pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of du divided by 1 plus u squared times alpha minus 2u. And we could factor on an alpha term here, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, meaning that we have 1 plus u squared minus 2u by alpha and pi by alpha outside. Okay, great. So for this very simple integral, all we need is a completing square method for the denominator. We have du divided by u squared minus 2u times 1 by alpha, so we need a plus 1 by alpha squared, and we already have this plus 1 term minus the 1 by alpha squared to balance things out, meaning that we have pi by alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of du divided by all of this being u minus 1 by alpha squared plus alpha squared minus 1 by alpha squared. And again, some simplification can be done here. We have u alpha minus 1 by alpha. And we could just expand using alpha squared. Cancellation again. So we have pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of alpha du divided by alpha u minus 1 squared plus alpha squared minus 1, which can, of course, be written as the square root of alpha, alpha squared minus 1 squared. Okay, great. So all of this is an inverse tangent structure. We have pi times, no, wait, we have pi divided by the square root of alpha squared minus 1 times the inverse tangent of alpha u minus 1 divided by square root alpha squared minus 1, the limits being 0 and infinity. And as u approaches infinity, the inverse tangent term will approach pi by 2. So we have all of this times pi by 2, whereas if u approaches 0, we have the inverse tangent of negative 1 divided by that stuff, and the inverse tangent function is an odd function, so two negatives cancel out. We have inverse tangent of 1 by alpha squared minus 1. That's what the integral from 0 to pi of x dx divided by alpha minus sine x evaluates out to. And here I've rewritten the equation for the target integral i. So we have this result. And this integral is strikingly similar to this one, the only difference being the plus sine x term. So after the phase shift, you'll have the same thing, pi by 2 times an integral from 0 to pi of dx divided by alpha plus sine x. And after the wire stress substitution, the only difference would be a plus 2u divided by 1 plus u squared instead of a minus 2u term. So the only difference after the whole completing square thing, would be something here. Yes, right here. This is where the difference would lie. You would, in fact, have alpha u plus 1 instead of minus 1. So that means we know what this thing evaluates out to as well. We have the integral from 0 to pi of x dx divided by alpha plus sine x being equal to pi by 
alpha squared minus 1 times a pi by 2 term minus the inverse tangent term. That is the inverse tangent of the reciprocal of square root alpha squared minus 1. Okay. And now for the remaining integral, we know that after a phase shift, the integral from 0 to pi, that is this integral here, would be equal to pi by 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of dx divided by alpha plus sine x. That is if we perform the phase shift going from the x realm to the pi minus x realm. And that means for this integral, all we have to do is multiply the above result in blue by 2 by pi. So let me just write that out. So I have all the necessary ingredients in front of me. We have this whole thing that's being multiplied by 2 pi. We know that this would be this exact same result multiplied by uh, 2 by pi times 2 pi as well, so that would be 4. So you have this multiple of 4 there. We have 4 pi by square root alpha squared minus 1 times pi by 2 minus the inverse tangent of 1 by square root alpha squared minus 1. So I've rewritten these quite colorful results and named the integrals i1, i2, and i3. And the target integral is related to them by this equation. So we have to subtract i1 and i2. So that means we'd be rid of the pi by 2 terms, right? And we'd be left with pi by alpha squared minus 1 times the inverse tangent of 1 by square root alpha squared minus 1 times 2, correct? And we have to add to it the i sub 3 term. So that would be, for the first case, we have 4 pi by that thing. Okay, so that means I have 2 pi squared uh, divided by alpha squared minus 1 in the square root minus 4 pi by, again, this thing, times the inverse tangent of the reciprocal of, again, square root alpha squared minus 1. So this is a 4 pi term. This is a 2 pi term. There's a negative 4 pi, that is, meaning that we have 2 pi squared divided by square root alpha squared minus 1 minus 2 pi by square root alpha squared minus 1 times the inverse tangent of 1 by square root alpha squared minus 1. And we could factor out 2 pi squared by alpha squared minus 1 as well, giving us 1 minus 1 by pi times the inverse tangent of 1 by alpha squared minus 1. And that is your target integral in terms of the parameter alpha, which is a pretty dope looking result. And I really enjoyed the solution development here. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.